Today we're gonna to share with you our poor man's way of bringing electricity with you when you're boondocking. We're gonna walk you through today what we bring out here, how we keep it charged, how we maintain this deep cell battery with solar power, and it's all on the cheap. It's a very simple setup. It's not clean. It's not the prettiest setup, but it will work to just get you out here, get you off the grid, and still be connected to your electronics. These are not all the items. We're gonna be pulling out more items as we go along, but we're gonna go one by one through what we have here. Before we start charging anything off of our deep cell battery on our teardrop or the scamp, we always go first to our battery bank. This is a battery bar, it holds a charge. We charge this at home. It charges the laptop multiple times, it charges these cell phone batteries, the drone batteries, the phone batteries. We can get quite a few charges off this. It's a 27,000 mAh power, so this is as high as you can get to take on an airplane. Uh, any higher than this, and airplanes won't allow it. In most countries, they do allow this size for international travel. So again, we charge this when we're at home, we run everything off of it. We also do charge it out here, but boy, that's kind of a waste, right? You're using an inverter here, which wastes power off the battery, to charge another power bank that when you charge it has an inverter too, so there's power loss. So the best way to charge is straight from the battery to one of these items. But we do, when we're getting heavy solar power and we have a lot of energy, we do refill this while we're out boondocking because this is great in an emergency situation to always have it charged. All right, first thing first is the table. We always bring out one of these foldable aluminum tables. They don't weigh anything. We use it in the kitchen for prepping food. We use it for holding dishes while washing dishes. And it's a nice clean place to store all your electronics when charging them. What surprised us most when we came out here was how often we're charging these cell phones. And what you find when you start getting off grid is you start going on cell phone towers with weak signals or you're sharing off of other people's towers, and that tends to draw a lot more power from your battery. So typically our phones will last us a day and a half. Out here sometimes our phones can last us a half a day. For those of you who aren't sure if boondocking is even your thing, or if you're not sure if you're going to utilize solar, don't go out and buy those big panels. I'd suggest picking up something like this from Amazon. I wanna say this little guy's like a three watt solar panel. When we first started teardropping, we just owned two of these. Two of these plugged into a little 12 volt adapter was enough to run us out there, our lights in our teardrop, enough to charge all our batteries. We upgraded to this because we started reading forums that said if you get your 12 volt, your deep cell battery too low on a charge, you could damage it. And we didn't know, you know, we really didn't know how much charge was coming out of the battery when we were boondocking. And this is a little six volt. So we use this and two of these. And we come to find once we now know how much charge we're using, this probably was a little overkill even. We have some friends over at Camp and Camera if you haven't seen that channel, it's a guy who builds a teardrop in his garage and the teardrop's incredible. And he shared this tiny little device with us that you plug into your 12 volt adapter and it'll tell you how much battery charge you have left on your 12 volt, on the deep cell. And so if you do wanna know like we did, just pick up one of those and you don't have to purchase one of those entire systems that shows you how much voltage is coming in and out for a simple startup setup. but I think there's even an easier, cheaper setup to get into, and that would be some sort of portable battery station. Now this guy here, Rock Pals, reached out to us and sent us a portable power station. This is a 300 watt. As you've seen in this video, we have a lot of different battery bank options, but this is where I would start. If you had a simple teardrop trailer like us, or maybe like a runaway, you're not gonna have to go through the hassle of installing a deep cell battery and all the electrical hookups. 
This just charge from home is by far more than we need to run our lights, to charge all our gear. And if you do need more power, you just hook a solar panel up to this and this thing actually charges twice as fast on solar than it does right off your home wall or from your car. We are actually using this to power our ceramic heater in our teardrop. So this thing is a beast. We're gonna share more about it in the next episode, a whole episode dedicated to this thing, because honestly, for many of you, something like this, a little seven pound portable generator is going to be pretty much a game changer for you when it comes to saving money and living off the grid. Here's a tip I don't think you all know, and that's that you can take drone batteries and use them as power banks. So we typically carry multiple drone batteries with us and DJI will supply you with this tiny little adapter. This adapter plugs into any USB device and you're going to attach the adapter to the battery and you will turn the battery on and now you have a fully functioning little power bank that you can plug into, let's say your phone. Oops, I didn't turn this on and now my phone is charging. Another really neat thing, and I think even a larger capacity battery, is your remote for your drone. Your remote does the, pretty much the same thing. So on the remote, under here, you have another USB port. Attach that to your phone or whatever is charged by USB. And again, it's a battery bank. This remote is designed to charge your phone while it's attached so you can continue to see your drone and not lose connection with it. So this is something I think a lot of people aren't using, but it's just great to know you have a backup out there when you go to these smaller battery banks if your larger ones do run out. So your propane is gonna last you quite a while. We use multiple sources off of it and it really doesn't take much drain on your propane. What is going to be impacted with the scamp is the amount of electricity you have. So each time you turn on that heater, this runs the fan, your deep cell battery. Um, so that's why we bring solar with us. We bring solar panels. It also helps us run all this. We're running a lot of things off of this deep cell to stay out here for a week or more at a time. So as you can see here, we can do about four things at once. So we're running two phones charging the drone batteries and charging one single camera battery off of this charge. This inverter has two USB ports which charge our phone while we're charging other items. We have a very limited data plan on this phone but it's just enough to get on Google Earth to look for the next boondocking site and enough to get on and check the weather for where we're going for the day. Also, this data does allow us to get online and respond to your comments, learn from you along the way, and just feel a little connected to this community. The inverter we use is a very cheap Walmart inverter. It's not very good. Uh, it frays, it doesn't have a good plastic cover here for some reason. This is the second one we got. We had to take back one because uh, we thought the fuse was blowing, but it ended up being the receptacle for the charge port. Um, for some reason it didn't work anymore. But you're going to need a larger one like this if you're going to power anything with large wattage. So we have a 200 watt one that we've had for over 15 years and it's been great for us. But the problem is in our teardrop, we use a ceramic heater that's 200 watt. And so you need one of these 400 watt or greater ones, cause this is the peak power at 400 watts. And these type you connect directly to your deep cell battery. So the ones that you plug in with a socket into your 12 volt plug, let's say in your teardrop or in your car, those can only go up to 200 watts and that's not even continuous. So you're gonna to continue to blow fuses or even ruin your inverter. So these you plug in straight onto your woo, deep cell battery. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do it while it's on. I grabbed the 200 watt inverter we have. Like we said, it's over 15 years old 
It's the type that has the 12 volt plug. We keep this just stored under our front seat in the car. And that way when we're going down the road on a long drive, we can also charge these batteries for the camera, for the drone, charge our phones, things like that. So this is one we're running off the car battery while the car is turned on and driving down the road. So this is our laptop. It's Asus brand. Laptops have come so far in the last few years. This little guy has an i7 processor on it. It has a GeForce graphics card. So this can do some intense video editing. I edit all my 4K drone videos on here. I edit my 1080 HD videos from the Panasonic GH5. This little thing has great battery life and it is extremely thin. That's how many of these laptops are coming out today. So when boondocking, this thing will run a long time if you're just um, working on a Word document, browsing the internet, something like that. But when you are doing video editing out here, it chews up a battery in less than, I'd say like an hour, hour and a half, because that's some pretty intensive processing. And because it does that, and because we do edit videos while out here, we do have to charge it quite often off of this system. So again, the first place I charge it off of is the battery bank. But if that's depleted, I then go to the deep cell. So for those of you who are doing electricity in your small camper trailer, if you could share with us below how you got into this, what you're using now, some suggestions for us to keep the price low or really to say this isn't worth it, just upgrade to this sort of system. Let us know, we're all kind of learning together in this community and we appreciate all the feedback. Thanks guys for watching. If you like this video, share it out with your friends, give us a like and we will see you in the next episode.